guys! If this is your first time on my channel, I'm Amazon Kane. I'm a writer. I obsess over Angela Conda. I do rewatch videos. That's what this is. And my ultimate goal is to run an official reboot of the series. You can even see what that would look like on my channel as I organized a small team to revamp the theme song. I'm gonna be honest, this is not an episode I was looking forward to reviewing. I don't like the ending of it, but it does have an interesting setup and eating with people you get frustrated with or people you can't stand, that's a that's a Thanksgiving trope. That's a Thanksgiving tradition. I did no Thanksgiving last year, so let's do another meal-themed episode. Here is Eating with the Enemy. I also do like that title. I know my dad is the most perfect dad in the world, but it is even Aww. better when everyone else knows it too. Aw, that's nice that the anacondas are eating together at the Abadis. Interesting, and just actually inviting him in wars over. My lovely wife and our precious little <laughs> Nanette. Precious little Nanette? That's perfect, Hal. How about tomorrow night for dinner? Perfect indeed. <laughs> Mom does not look happy. Now my big mouth has not only ruined tomorrow night's dinner, but tonight's triple pepperoni dinner as well. On account of now, I don't feel so well. Aww. So now I am... Aww, the crazy hairdo and outfit. Oh my god. How's my tie? Is it straight? Is that a fish? That's creative. Before, you know, it haven't turned out that well. This is different, Jen. I really think the food rejuvenator 3000 could hit big. That's why we've all got to make a good Oh my god, Mark and Derek. No problem, Dad. That's why we came up with this party trick. You know, in case there's like a low. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> Impressive. Don't do it. Now, Angela, that was a good delivery. A to your dad, so for his sake, we've all got to be on our best behavior and try to get along with the manoirs. It's the least we can do. I guess I can at least do the least I can do. Dang. But ho ho, I won't know what to talk about with these people. Be brave, Poopsie. <laughs> oh my God. Without drilling in the mud, and if his invention's all it's cracked up to be, we just might hit a gusher tonight. Princess, try to get along with these uh, uh, people as best you can. I That's surprisingly. Papa, which is French for if you buy me something. Oh my god. <laughs> I like Mr. Menoir. He's kind of fun. Even if he sometimes he's a good guy, sometimes he's an antagonist. He's overall got a fun personality. Invite them in. Won't you come in? Why, thank you, Angela. Nice hair, Angela Anaconda. Howl. Nice How personality, you, uh, Minnie Poo. Partner. And a bunny. And Nanette. Your hair is looking very pretty. Well, thank you. <laughs> and yours, well, well, I must say, I admire a woman who doesn't spend hours worrying over how she looks. I truly do. I suppose if I have to be miserable, I should at least be happy doing it. Oh, Nanette. Seeing as how you are 
and weaponized being annoying. You please allow me to entertain you. Doing what? Oh, uh, I thought we might start off by tossing dirty tennis balls for my dog to catch in her slobbery mouth. Do you honestly think I would? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would weaponize it. Angela. I do find it's funny that both the Menwars and the Anacondas don't really know how to interact with each other. Oh dear, sorry about that. I think it's sweet of you to collect clothes for the poor. I can never find the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do what we can. Isn't this and I love Angela's mom trying so hard to get along with her. Funny or I kind of wish they would interact as families more often. Fortunately, I've had these antiseptic gloves when I knew I would be coming to your house. <laughs> Angela, they do splat. I'm bored with this game. I know. Let's dig for earthworms in the earth. Ugh. Having a good time, girls? Yes, Daddy. In fact, oh. I perform my gymnastic ribbon dance for her. Blam. <laughs> Oh my god, the twitching eye. A uh, nice little place you've got here. You know, it can be tiresome sometimes living in a grand palatial house with extensive grounds and a huge car. <laughs> Not as tiresome as hearing about it. Hmm. It's difficult to do in a bedroom so much smaller than my own, but I usually finish with a jeté. At this point, the audience applauds again. Unless they want me to tell their parents they're not playing nice. Yep. All of the audience. What's hmm. that smell? Tuna noodle casserole, ho ho. Oh, isn't that ho, ho. sweet? Why, wow, we haven't had that since the slumming for charity ball. And that was ages ago. The slumming for charity ball. Well, Classic. Uh, to see rehydrated jerky. Into the dining room, everybody, for the big demonstration. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the Food Rejuvenator 3000? The question is, are you ready, Bill? Because if this gizmo really works... I, I feel like Mr. Renoir really does want to invest in Mr. Anaconda's work. Life for you and your family. Play your cards right and someday you'll all get a taste of what it's like to be us. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Just one more little adjustment. Uh, there we go. Who can help me demonstrate? I can, Dad. But I was first in my spokesmodeling class, and I have extensive beauty pageant experience, to say nothing of natural poison grace. <laughs> Give the net some room, dear. So Nitty Poo thinks she can just come into my house and do anything she wants. Well, I won't let that happen again on account of next time I will do things differently. Ooh, all right. Entree, I will say next time. Which is French for watch your stack. Yeah! Don't forget to wash your hands for dinner. <laughs> nice! Oh, Angela, whose precious time I wasted and not the other way around. Sadistic, I love it. Tell me. Fear not, oh spinning in. Your time is up. Okay. Oh, Looks like now it is time to air this dirty line. <laughs> Missing this. You did it intentionally on purpose? 
I hate but that part. Pillow, that was your shot at the big time. Let's just say I tasted the big time and I like the taste of tuna noodle casserole better. You know, but money to afford that is kind of nice too. And keeping the roof over your head. Sure gets rid of pests. <laughs> uh. I do not like this cliche in sitcoms and I see that a lot. Particularly around the 90s, early 2000s. Uh, the invention that's getting a that's on the cusp of becoming big only for something to go wrong or to be intentionally sabotaged honestly i did not like that thought no you money automat would not have automatically turned the anacondas into the benoirs it's that could have been used for mark and derrick's uh, i guess repeated injuries or college it, i didn't like that i thought you know Okay, great, he has a job, but at the same time, I didn't like that he was sabotaging himself. Maybe if the idea was, I mean, he could have just sold it and been done with it instead of, I don't know. Because I actually do like this idea, and I think there is so much fun with this. I thought, especially the first two thirds, and I liked the revenge fantasy, it, it did have a lot of fun with it. I loved, I loved it. Uh, Nanette and her mom trying to get along with Angela and her mom. I like that there's awkwardness on both sides. I think that's very fun and also very realistic. I like the revenge fantasy. It was delightfully sadistic. I like seeing Angela's family all dressed up. That was fun. You don't really see that. You also don't see a ton of episodes where they're all together as a family. And that is kind of fun too. I don't know. I don't, I still, I'm not... The reason I didn't want to watch this one really was because of the ending. I don't like seeing the people sabotage themselves. I get it, status quo, but they could have just sold it off and never had to deal with the memoirs again, or... He could have had the choice between just sell it off or... and deal... either continue with it or just sell it off and just sell the rights and just... I mean, that, that choice could have been in there. It's so frustrating. Because I do, I, I felt like this was such a big loss for them. Oh, it's, what a shame. Or even if it was, or if it just worked and things didn't work out anyway. Just, it, the machine worked and they still reject it. That could have been, I would have accepted that anyway. If they wanted to keep the message of, hey, you know, sometimes things don't work out. Or, and sometimes, hey, a, failure happens or I don't I just don't like the part of him intentionally sabotaging it I I think it would have been a little more interesting if it worked the way it should and it was still rejected so I, th I think that would have been a bit more interesting especially because this is a twist that I've seen so much in sitcoms around this time and for kids and adults I remember Disney Channel did this twist a lot and just, and adult sitcoms did this a lot it was so it's it's just not fun and it does and especially because it's been done so much it feels so contrived but there was better stuff in it than I did realize I don't want to just discount the other the rest of the episode because there really is a lot of good in here there is a lot of stuff that hey you don't see too much and it's just, it is also funny the setup of having to have dinner with someone you can't stand. Having to be nice to the classmate you absolutely hate because your parents do business together. Or some suburban politics nonsense. Yeah. So there is a lot of relatability in this one. There is a lot of comedy with the awkwardness of the two families. There is... A lot of comedy in the chaos. I do like seeing a bit of the the loving dysfunction of Angela's home life. Hate the ending, but I like the setup. I do find that there is very unique comedy in it. I almost kind of wish they did this setup a little bit more. I feel like there is a ton of other things that could have been done with that connection. Yeah, plus again, I, do, I find the Nets' parents very funny as characters too. I do 
I love her dad. I think he's kind of a nice guy, but he's also kind of a he's also kind of a jerk. He does he's on the fence. Sometimes he's very helpful, but other times he's a pretentious jerk. And I that you can get a lot of mileage out of him this way. I love his old timey mustache. I love the way he talks. He's funny. And that's mom's hilarious. She's not written with a ton of consistency, but I thought she was pretty funny here. And I thought they got creative with the fur she was wearing. And of course, uh, yeah, and that's not, she's a jerk, but she's not as bad as she is in other episodes, I think. I also think it's really funny how she is expected to behave. It is kind of rare that you see that she's powerless in a situation. I, it's a very realistic way that it's done. So that is fun. You, de you do get to see things, you do get to see some things you don't usually see in the show, and they do work out, and there is a realism to this scenario. I think it could be punched up even more. If the ending were a little different, I would think this is a, an interesting, maybe, upper... This If the ending were less contrived and less self-sabotage-y... Self-sabotage-ish. If the ending didn't involve self-sabotage or in fear of success and just come out of nowhere... God, I do not like this ending. But I... There is a lot of other stuff in this that I do really like and can really get into, and good. I like Angela's family. I like the comedy. I like seeing Angela's home. I like the dynamic of the anacondas and the memoirs. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, there was better stuff in here than I realized. It's just the ending does prevent it from being, from being a good episode in my eyes. Anyways... Happy holiday season. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you who celebrate. I realize that it comes at a different time for my Canadian friends. It was happy Thanksgiving season. Happy upcoming holiday season. There will be more rewatches. Stay sane. Stay safe. And uh, yeah, stay sane. <laughs>